guys, what happened this week in Superbrew? I mean, everyone was in such a good role and then this weekend happened. Just to give you an idea, the community average on Superbrew is 2 out of 5 games for the weekend. That is very poor. Then on Fantasy, the community average is 115. That's the average, that's most people's lowest score they get in a season. Before I move on, I would just like to send my condolences to everyone affected by what happened in Christchurch this week. Uh, you are in our thoughts and in our prayers as South Africans and we are thinking about you. The first game of the weekend was the Chiefs versus the Hurricanes. It was a typical New Zealand derby where no team gives it an inch and uh, no team actually backs down. The end score there was a draw, a 23-23 draw. Uh, they always say a draw is like kissing your sister. Uh, I think that is probably a good summary of what happened there. Uh, in that game, every time one team scored, the other team fired back with another score. The Chiefs would feel hard done. They had a seven point lead at halftime and they kind of gave it away from there. They did improve their defense, I have to say. Finally, they did br break their four game losing streak. So that is a big step for them. They don't have that L under their name, as you can see. Uh, Lau Mape, he didn't play that well for the Hurricanes, where Bowden Barrett, he actually did play really well. Uh, they, there's a couple of players that does make the dream team for this week. Blackwell from the Hurricanes, he's the lock. He got 10 on Superbrew, which isn't fantastic, but that's the best lock for the week. Uh, made 7 meters, 9 carries, 11 tackles and 1 turnover. It's always good when other players on your field can also make turnovers. Bowden Barrett, he's also in the dream team. Uh, he got a score of 25.5, he made 81 meters, 13 carries, 25 passes and 2 turnovers. Fly halves don't really get into it in the rucks. So if you see someone like Barrett get into the rucks and actually get the ball for your team, that's a very good sign. That means it's a guy that wants to work hard for his team. Then Wes Hoerson. If you want a little bit of background from him, he was actually born in the Eastern Cape, but he moved over to New Zealand when he was aged four. So it's one of those guys that's a South African, but he's a New Zealander all the way through. Uh, he scored one try, made 141 meters with 10 carries. That means 14 meters per carry. And he beat 13 defenders, which is staggering numbers. Then the last guy that also made the dream team, uh, Damien McKenzie, finally makes it onto my dream team for the season. He hasn't been on it yet. It was the first game he played on 15 again. And did he show what he can do? At the 10, I don't think he's the best 10. I think they are ruining his chances to actually become a top all black by playing him at 10. Just hear me out. They have Barrett and they have Mahunga. What do you, why do you want McKenzie there as well? Why don't you just play him at fullback where he is at his best form? There he is competing with Jordy Barrett and Ben Smith, Smith and those guys, but Ben Smith isn't getting any younger and Damien is playing really well. He's that guy that can play anywhere, so I guess there is a bit of sense in playing him at 10. He scored one try, made 84 meters, 13 carries and beat three defenders. The second game for the weekend was the Brumbies versus the Waratahs. The Brumbies beating the Waratahs 19 to 16. It was a great game for the Brumbies as forwards. They really they outclassed the Waratahs forwards. The Waratahs had a bit of a lucky first try. I see a lot of reports where they say it was a training ground move which they tried to perfect there. I'm not so convinced. Foley kicked one out of four in that match. So, yeah, and his kicking hasn't been great this season. So, I'm not 
taking that story and believing that it was a training ground move maybe who knows i can't say anything about that but i think it was a lucky try uh falau played at the fullback again and that's where he has to play and you just saw his game was so much better when he played at fullback again um Fahinga from the Brumbies, he scored two tries, he was on his way for a third try and then uh, Harry Johnson Holmes collapsed that mall and got a yellow card, I think, yeah, the Waratahs got two yellow cards in that match, showing that they do not have uh, great discipline. There was one player that made it onto the Dream Team for the week, uh, Hooper, he scored a try, he uh, got a score of 18 on Superbrew, 14 carries, 6 defenders beaten, that's very good, he's a flanker and he made 15 tackles which is also a very good performance by the captain. Then we move over to the Stormers versus the Jaguars. I read earlier they said the Stormers played badly in their first game, okay in their second game, good in their third game and great in the, this fourth game and I can agree. Hopefully they can continue that, but they are going over to New Zealand now. I think their first game is against the Hurricanes, and then it's the Blues, uh, Reds, and Rebels, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but this in this game, the Stormers show they don't only possess defensive strength, but they also can attack. Because everyone keeps saying the Stormers has some of the most dangerous attackers in that backline, but they don't use it. In this game, they actually did use it. Uh, it started out in a way that most Stormers fans would have not liked, with the Jaguars scoring an easy try in the start. But from there on, the Jaguars did nothing, and it was all Stormers. Uh, they played now four games, and they won three, which is a very good record. Kulisi, he led the charge for the game. Uh, but I have to say the Stormers initially had a poor line out. I don't know what's going on there. It doesn't look like Mbunambi or Ntubeni is actually playing well with the line out. But they always say you can't just blame the hooker. It is the throwers as well. But they do have world class locks in that team or jumpers at least. So I don't know what's going on there. They need to work on it though. Espia Mare, again, he is one of the reasons the Stormers are doing well this season. He just continues to make that scoreboard, scoreboard tick over with his kicking. He keeps kicking over. Um, to me, he's not the best winger uh, or fullback for that matter. He is a bit slow and he has a tendency to keep onto the ball and not pass it out. So um, defenders know he's going to hold onto that ball. But then again, he is the reason they are in this game. They can take penalties from anywhere and he kicks over. So that might be the reason they shifted him onto that wing. Where he's a bit more out of the game and they try and play the game in different parts of the field. Uh, one player made the dream team for the week. It's Herschel Yankees. He was the best scrum off on Super Brew. He scored one try. He had three carries. Ran nine meters. So that... That three things have to show you he has that sniping role he doesn't run a lot and he doesn't actually run far but he just gives a dummy pass and he runs and he scored a try from that the second time this season by doing that and he is quite fast his acceleration is impressive uh, he beat two defenders made seven tackles which is good and he made one turnover for a little scrum off that's also great numbers to have someone else turning over the ball uh, like I said previously for the other players. So the fourth game for the weekend was the Sun Rules going down to the Reds 31 to 34. I actually enjoyed this game it was a quite uh, great affair for me it was up and down the whole time. It did look like the Sun Wolves were going to win in that first half but that second half was good. The Sun Wolves led 21 to 5 by half time but the Reds fought back uh, the Reds just were better at scrum time the whole game through and they forced penalties by doing that which meant Stewart could uh, kick the penalties over and get points for their team and at the end that brought them back into contention for the game 
both teams looked like winning in that last 15 to 10, mi 10 minutes of the game. But that poor clearance from the Sun Wolves, where there was a charge down and the replacement scrum half, I can't remember the surname for some reason now, scored a try. But then they missed the conversion. Then it looked like, okay, another draw for the weekend, who would have thought? But then the Sun Wolves con conceded another penalty and the Reds kicked it over. So it's, it's poor decisions and poor things like that that makes a good team that or not giving away those poor penalties which makes a good team for the dream team jp smith made the dream team from the reds he got a score of 10 19 meters six carries two defenders beaten and seven tackles then salakaya lotto uh, for lock he got 10.5 16 meters 17 carries two defenders beaten and six tackles uh, Stewart also made the team, he, he got a 26, he made 82 meters, 10 carries, 7 defenders beaten, that's good, 3 clean bre breaks, uh, 2 conversions, 1 penalty. And then from the Sunwolves, Dan Pryor, he got a 19 on Superbrew, 1 try, 40 meters, 7 carries and 14 tackles, which is very good. Then we move over to the next game. The Crusaders versus Highlanders game was abandoned and effectively they, both teams got a, got two points and it was a draw. Then it was the Lions versus the Rebels. In that first half, I thought, oh, another game on Super Brew that's wrong. And yeah, half time, the, just soon after half time, the Rebels scored again and the score was at that moment 33 to 5 for the Rebels. So any I think everyone thought, okay, the Lions are going down here. Poor game from them. But then the Rebels started giving away a lot of penalties. Um, which allowed the Lions to actually fight back. The Lions actually didn't go for goal a lot in the game. Being far down like that, it makes sense to actually go for the line or take a scrum or uh, yeah, whatever else, but the scrums don't know what was going on there. It was up and down. It looks looked like the referee didn't know who was winning and who was losing. The rebels gave away one yellow card, but I think there should have been more. They gave away cynical penalties after each other, just in front of the line, and that to me is cynical penalties that get yellow cards. Uh, but at the end of the day, that was the referee's decision. The Lions also made poor decisions. When they actually got back into the game, they turned down three opportunities to take uh, a shot at goal in the last 10 minutes. I don't understand why. There was no reason for them not to take the shot at goal. Because if they um, actually kicked it over, they would have won the game. And eventually, after trying to go to the line and attacking and attacking and not getting any try from that they took the penalty in the 82nd minute from a bad angle as well putting a lot of pressure on the young replacement but he did perform well with that kick the dream team players from that game was dylan smith he he had a great prop performance uh, running two meters with six carries uh, but he had one try assist for his nine on super brew then Malcolm Marks, he had one try, 57 meters. He was a lot of times, he was on the wing running and he has good carries over there. Uh, 17 carries, two clean breaks and his lineouts looked good. He had 12 lineouts that was successful. So that gave him his score of 19 on Super Brew. Then it was Quaja Smith, uh, 89 meters, seven carries, one try assist and eight tackles gave him a score of 20.5 on Super Brew. And then from the Rebels, the two centers both make the team, Meeks and English. English got one try from 55 meters. Meeks, despite his yellow card he got, that was his only penalty he gave away in the game. So it was just the, he was the unlucky man to at the end get the yellow card, but uh, he got a score of 16. He one try, 11 carries, 
90 meters ran and he tackled eight defenders okay that's a review for week five uh, if you haven't subscribed yet please do please join the super brew pool it's in the description somewhere and leave a comment if you like the new format of how i compiled the video uh, that's all cheers see you for the preview